we have seen some upsets in round two so far, so definitely a lot of adjustments have to be made by teams and handicappers. Welcome to the Sportsbook Review NBA Preview Show. I'm Joe Duffy, and along with uh, Troy West of TroyWins.com, of course, I am with OffshoreInsiders.com. We are going to preview round two of the NBA playoffs. And before I do go on, go, do go on any further, and we'll talk to Troy about that. Let me tell you about my newest obsession. Check it out. Sportsbook Review, SBR Odds. Brand new site as far as the odds and the scores on progress. I absolutely love it. Go to SBR Odds. You're actually going to have to click on the try the beta odds because, you know, still the, the current odds are what you've seen over the last couple of years. But I really love it. You can go through all the lines. I always say at OffshoreInsiders.com, look, I'm going to give you the best picks, but you never, ever want to get screwed by a line move. The new SBR Odds site, as I said, go and click on the try the beta odds format. It is fantastic. I honestly don't know. And look, at one time I used to subscribe to one of those big premium sites, the one with the initials of DB. Very happy. I'm not going to say anything bad about them except the price. You got everything that you want at the new uh, SBR odds site and more. And I was showing you the odds, but believe me, once the games get in progress, it's even better. You get the situations. I do realize the current odds site, or what will soon, I guess, be the, the older odds site, does that, but it displays even better. So make sure you visit sbrodds.com and click on the Try the Beta Odds uh, tab for sure. Well, Troy, as I said, we've seen some upsets in those odds that we just looked at at uh, sbrodds.com for Thursday. We'll start it out where Toronto and uh, Cleveland are playing. Cleveland did steal game one, but Toronto is laying six and a half. And uh, if you do shop around at SBR Odds, looks like you can get a six at some places with two twelve and a half and then Philadelphia at Boston. Boston as the home dog did steal game one. Uh, Philadelphia laying four and a half on the road, minus 104. Although, you know, make sure you do shop around. I do see four and minus 115. And it looks like the total is 206 and a half across the board. Although, actually, I do see one 206. But mostly 206 and a half across the board. Anything that you like for the Thursday portfolio with either the side or the total? Yeah, Joe, I think the Thursday portfolio is really tough. You know, I came on record last week and did say that, or excuse me, earlier this week and, and said I like Toronto a lot in that series. They lose game one. I mean, they had that game, you know, for, gosh, until the final couple of minutes they collapsed. Now, you know, the, Toronto could go one of two ways. This could be the Toronto that we've seen the last couple of years that got balanced by the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, and as many people have said, this is the worst Cleveland team that we've seen enter the playoffs in some time for them to lose game one was what could have been crushing but i do think this toronto team does bounce back I, I think vegas even thinks they're going to bounce back i mean they just lost home court advantage and they went from about a minus 185 favorite to a plus 115 underdog so yeah the lines definitely shifted on the series but they're still favored by six and a half points that's a lot of points against the cleveland team that just stole game one I am going to probably take a pass, Joe. I would not be shot if Cleveland hung around. But I truly do think Toronto does get this game. Uh, if I were to bet it, Joe, I think they're going to win this game by 8 to 10 points. This is still a very, very good Toronto basketball team. They're well coached. They've got a lot of veterans. I'm not shying away. I still think they're going to get this series. And then going to the other one, boy, I was shocked to see that not only that Boston Celtics won that game, but how they won that game. I mean, they put a beating on the 76ers. I don't want to overreact to that game, Joe, as I do still think the 76ers win this series, but Brad Stevens has got something going. I mean, they win that game without Jalen Brown. He's supposed to be back in the lineup tonight, and they're still an underdog. For me, it's a pass. I need to see one more game of this series to see if this Celtics team's for real. I think you'd be uh, a little bit foolish to jump on the 76ers at 3, 3.5 because it just seems like a sucker's bet to me. So kind of curious your thoughts on it. For Thursday's portfolio, I am staying away. I do think the Toronto Raptors get the win tonight, but I'm pretty heavy on them in the series, and I still think they're going to win that series. Yeah, Troy, uh, certainly we and the, the media and sports fans, we tend to really overuse the phrase must win, but if there is such thing as a must win, you got to mm -hmm. think it would be Toronto. If there is such thing as a must win in game two of any series, you got to think sure. it's Toronto because uh, Cleveland, look, I did predict that Cleveland would win the series, but I do want to, you know, I, I do want to be fair and balanced. I had Toronto in game one. My computer's been too kind to me and that gave a bunch of systems that said go with Toronto. So even though I did predict Cleveland to win the series, 
Uh, Toronto was my pick in game one. But really, as you've said, this is a gut check for Toronto. I think they were up by at least nine, maybe even uh, more in the fourth quarter, and they blew mm-hmm. that lead. So, you know, it's the old ghost of playoffs past that's, that could come back and haunt them. I really think it's more about the, the mental state for Toronto than it is anything else. Of course, you know, talent-wise, pure talent-wise, there's no question this line is about right. But Toronto, they were punched in the mouth. They still have to be thinking about, look, you know, we, we've come up short in the playoffs in the past. Uh, all the pressure is clearly on Toronto here. And I subscribe to what Mark Jackson always likes to say. And when he says it, he's always, uh, he says he's quoting Greg Popovich, never underestimate the heart of a champion. I don't know if I can do a good Mark Jackson impression. So uh, I'll just say it in my, my own voice. Never underestimate the heart of a champion. I think we saw that. King LeBron James, the man is fantastic. He showed that in game one. Uh, game two, you know, what, what will be the uh, case? I think if anything, I would probably say bet Toronto in the uh, first quarter. I don't have the first quarter. I'm not a big first quarter guy, but you got to think they're going to come out with incredible intensity trying to set the tone early. So I think Toronto as a first quarter bet would be a pretty good bet. And it's a pretty high total. I, I know that, you know, Cleveland is all of a sudden starting to now trend over just a uh, little bit, but I still think Cleveland their offensive, or I'm sorry, their defensive statistics from the regular season a bit deceptive. A little more intensity here. Also think they'll turn it up on the defensive end because, look, they're going to go for the jugular. So, uh, you know, with a pretty high total, maybe the under is something to look at. And Philadelphia and Boston. This is, you know, Philadelphia is in uncharted water. Now, granted, they lost to Miami in game two in uh, the first series, but that was to tie it up. And, of course, you might say, conversely, look, they lost at home, so they lost the home court advantage. When they did lose game one against Boston, there was no home court uh, advantage that was lost. They were the big uh, road favorites because of what we've discussed. You know, we've been talking about Boston's injuries all year long, and, of course, with uh, Jalen Brown adding to that. Plus, of course, Philadelphia is, as the, the process was supposed to be, they are the ascending team. They are substantially better the last two months than they were during the year. So, you know, there are obviously tons of extenuating circumstances why the 76ers are the road favorites still. All in all, I think it's pretty easy for the Sixers to kind of shrug off game one and say, yeah, you know, in the old, we, we always talk about from a handicapping standpoint, is it better to be sharp or is it better to be rested? Well, the Sixers can say, look, we were rusty from those six days off. Uh, you know, we've got off the rust. Now, now we're, you know, back in tune. We still have the, uh, the better legs. We're still the more talented team. But if there is, you know, again, I talk about overusing that term must win. I do think to a certain extent, if it's important for a road team to win game two, in a series that they're down one to nothing, it would be here because, as I said, this young Sixers team hasn't really been here before. You know, they've won uh, whatever it is, 22 out of their last 24. So if they fall behind uh, two to nothing, it's where they really have not been before. And how would they re- react being down two to nothing? So not a must win, but I do think a uh, game two for the Sixers is more important than you would normally say game two would be for a road team. But yeah, this is this could certainly set the tone of the series. If the Sixers win in a blowout tonight, then all of a sudden, so easy sure. to shrug off game one. But if not, uh, yeah, ga- game three could arguably be one of the most interesting games of the playoffs for uh, a- any team whatsoever. But if I'm Boston, I'm concerned. Look, Boston is the number one team defensively defending the three. The reason the Sixers were so awful in game one uh, shooting the three-pointer they they just had bad shots. They had good looks. So if you're a Sixers fan or if you're on the Sixers, you're going to be like, we had a lot of good looks. It's not like Boston was playing phenomenal defense. They just got to take advantage of those open shots. And then conversely, yeah, their two best players are young, but they still have some uh, some veterans after that. And actually, you know, Saric is young too, but they still have, you know, the two veterans that they got from the Hawks that are playing big factors. But yeah, this is... You know, arguably, arguably the most intriguing of the uh, the games too. But uh, the line has gone up. Philadelphia opened up at three and a half, and at SBR odds, they are now four and a half. The uh, Friday portfolio: Golden State, New Orleans. You know, no no shock here. Golden State. They look like they are finally healthy, and they they're the best team in the NBA for sure. They're laying, you know, what what some might consider only 
four points on the road, four and a half some places. So shop around at SBR odds, of course, at New Orleans. And we did see quite the big upset. How about those uh, Utah Jazz pulling off a pretty impressive win in game two? Houston laying three and a half on the road at Utah. Uh, that you might have to lay a little bit extra juice and the total is 207. What are your thoughts on those Friday contests? Yeah, you know, I think this could be a potential letdown spot for the Golden State Warriors. So I am going to stay away from the minus four, four and a half. Like you said, Joe, I am all been all over Golden State most of these playoffs. I was on them at the beginning of the year, actually, to win the whole thing. Stuck with my guns throughout the course of the they, they seem to do this every year throughout the course of the year. A lot of injuries, guys in and out of the lineup. But when it comes to the playoffs, Steve Kerr, it's almost like he does this on purpose. He gets all these guys ready to go, rested, and playing their best basketball in the playoffs. And they're doing that yet again. So what I would not be shocked if Golden State swept the Pelicans and got another double-digit win. But this looks like it could be a potential letdown spot in Game 3. It's do or die for the Pelicans if they lose. It's over. They are at home. You know, Anthony Davis, I think, could step up in a big, big way here and get it done. So for me, it's a pass because I just, one way or the other, I could see the Pelicans getting an outright win, or I could see the Warriors winning this one by 10. As far as that Houston-Utah game, that's the line that really shocks me, Joe. I expected, you know, how do you go, I mean, an eight-point swing. You know, they're going from 11-point favorite at home, and then they go into Utah, and that thing drops eight points. So now you're three, three and a half. I like Houston a lot. This is a really good Houston team. They're the number one seed. And, boy, this is a big, big game. They do not want to fall behind 2-1. to one. And if there's some reason they drop this game, boy, game four just becomes that much more important. I think overall Houston's the much better team in this series. I think they had a big slip up in game two. I like them to bounce back. Would be shocked if they don't win this game by at least six to ten points. But, boy, Vegas setting that line at three and a half really has me scratching my head. I truly thought they'd be about a six to seven point favorite even on the road because, come on, they're 10, 11 point favorites at home. So an eight point swing in that line kind of got me scratching my head. But I would be shocked. Houston's too good, too much firepower. I don't think they slip up two games in a row. To say the least, yeah, the Friday games are pretty interesting. Then again, you know, in round two of uh, a playoff series, they, they should be interesting. But yeah, I agree with what you said. I know historically, and I talked about, I think, on our, our first uh, NBA uh, playoff broadcast, updated the so-called zigzag theory where a lot of people like to bet against the team that won the previous game. And as I said, historically, it had done well. But the last two years, it's been an unmitigated disaster. I know historically teams that uh, in game three that are playing at home and down two games to nothing have done very well. But of course, not so much uh, last year where it wasn't all that great. But I, I do understand why that is the case where you could certainly see where regardless of what happened in the first two games and especially with their backs to the wall, a home court advantage is going to be even bigger in a game three situation like this down uh, three to nothing. So I do think that, you know, even even if uh, if New Orleans wins uh, game three, I, I think it'll be a bigger home court advantage than if they had some momentum going in the game four. And that's not speaking, you know, specifically about the New Orleans dynamics, just as a general rule of thumb. So I do agree that home underdogs in game three, when down two games to nothing, are quite dangerous here. Still, I think a lot of people are trying to outsmart the room. That maybe you know, because Golden State theoretically showed some vulnerability during the the year, and with Stephon Curry being out, uh, you know, so much. Golden State is still sorry, Houston Rockets fans. The Golden State Warriors are still far and away the best team in the league. And yeah, you know, Troy, I think maybe on our Last report, I was saying it looks like Joe Engel is the emerging superstar for Utah, and he had a massive night last night. Again, he's he's what a great story he is. Uh, you know, looked like he was going to be a career European player. Then he came to the NBA and looked like, you know, he could be a little bit of a journeyman. And I, as I said, I think he's, what, 30, 31 years old, maybe 29 years old. But he's he's been around playing professional basketball for quite some time. He's turned out to be a, a big weapon, and another thing that I, I said, I really think this year is not really an aberration, but a turning point where young players are uh, going to be very key in the postseason, and you can go deep in the playoffs with a star player as a young player, and with all the publicity it's, you know, given to the 76ers young players, Donovan Mitchell's been one hell of a player. I, I don't think it's, look, I'm not calling for, and I haven't even looked at the updated line, the series line, uh, you know, frankly, but... 
I don't think, you know, if Utah wins the series here, I'm not going to be completely shocked. I'm not calling for the upset, but the Utah Jazz are for real because, as I said, I don't, I don't think we're acknowledging how good this angle kid is. And I'm a believer that you can have a star player as, uh, you know, a young player, I should say, a rookie as your star player and still pull off some upsets. And, of course, most importantly, all the pressures on Houston. I will say this, look, in, in previous Houston's coming up short, their problem has been intensity on defense. I always say when a team that's punching them, intensity is always going to show up. Well, not always, but 90% of the time will show up on defense before it will on offense. So based on that, I would definitely lean towards the under uh, Houston and Utah. But, you know, Troy, what do you think? I mean, am I right? Do you think that much like in the NFL where, you know, years ago you could never contend with a, a rookie quarterback and now all of a sudden you can have a, a rookie quarterback or even a, a young first year quarterback and contend? Is this kind of, you know, the, the tipping point where young superstars, uh, teams can contend with young superstars and rebuild pretty quickly? Yeah, no, absolutely, Joe. I, I agree. And you're seeing it with the 76ers, with Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid and, and Donovan Mitchell. Like you said, this guy, without a doubt, he's been consistent all year. He's without a doubt the rookie of the year. And, you know, you get into the playoffs, and like you said, sometimes these guys, you know, you think they're going to take a step back. The pressure starts to amount. But, boy, you get a guy like Mitchell, and, and they've really rallied. They're playing good team basketball. What Quinn Snyder's done with the Utah Jazz has been absolutely remarkable. I mean, you get rid of – uh, Gordon Hayward, you get rid of Rodney Hood. I mean, you get rid of two of your biggest scores, and now you're in a position now you're where you're one one, and, and you're at home court advantage. So, and that in Salt Lake City, let's be honest, that's one of the toughest places to play in the NBA, without a doubt. So, Donovan Mitchell's got a real thing going on. I mean, if you were to just join the NBA watching this year, there's no way in hell you think this guy's a rookie. So, absolutely, he stepped in and. The kid, the kid's mature. He he plays. I mean, he completely outplayed Russell Westbrook in the first series. So, you know, it's no it's no longer a fluke. Let's say that it could be interesting to see what happens with this series and what's going to happen in Game Three. And I know a lot of people tend to prefer to vote, to bet on the better team off of a loss. They figure they're going to have more of a sense of urgency. But you know, one of those debates that kind of goes on in the sports betting in all sports is. You know, do you, do you want to have the less pressure and playing with quote unquote house money, so to speak, or would you just rather bet on the team with, with more urgency? I don't know. If there's anything that Utah has going for them and not so much the Sixers, because I think the Sixers really built up the expectations so high with their incredible finish to the year, but I still think Utah is really the team that you know, there's really no pressure on them, plus the fact that Utah's in a much better conference where nobody's expecting Utah to, you know, beat Houston and then beat Golden State in the next round. What, where do you really stand on, you know, maybe the sense of urgency versus having even less pressure and, you know, again, using that gambling term, playing with house money? Yeah, you know, I think it plays a little bit of a role. I think in the NBA, you get guys like Chris Paul and James Harden. I mean, these are guys that, you know, their whole careers have been defined on these type of moments. So I don't think Houston's really necessarily feeling the pressure. I, I mean, you know, this is a big, big game for them, but these guys are the absolute elite superstars in their, you know, in their league. And so I don't think Houston's necessarily feeling the pressure. But you, like you said, a team like Utah, they are playing house money. I mean, this is a coach and, and a team that really has zero expectations all year long. Most people didn't even think they'd make the playoffs. And here they are. So, you know, I do think there's something to be played with house money. I mean, you know, like I said, no one had these expectations of them, but I do think Houston's got enough veteran talent. You know, Mike D'Antoni's been there for, been in this league for a long time. I don't know how much pressure Houston really has, at least quite yet. They've been here before. Until this series is actually, until they're in a hold, maybe down 3 1 or even 2 1, I don't think Houston's really amounting much pressure right now. All right, outstanding points as always, Troy, and, and tell uh, everybody about more outstanding points they can get at TroyWins.com. Yeah, thanks, Joe. On a real nice baseball run right now, 9-3, and three, our, our last 12. We've been very patient with the NBA playoffs, really trying to pick our spots. Haven't had an official game play here in the last few days, but we're very big on Toronto in the series. We'll see how this one pans out. Looking forward to tonight's game, too. I still think it's a very much anybody's series. So, you know, come take a look at TroyWins.com. We're happy to give you a free trial. And as these playoffs progress, I, I truly think we're going to go on a real nice run here. And it's been a, a rare case, certainly since my son. I keep joking with my son. He's my good luck charm since August the 27th at OffshoreInsiders.com. Been on 
one of the uh, great runs in sports handicapping history, although uh, the past couple of nights, finally in the NBA, uh, not so great, but long-term continues to be outstanding. NHL as well. Visit me at offshoreinsiders.com, and I'm working on a lot of new uh, Major League Baseball systems, especially over the past three years, some dynamics have changed. So we continue to get better and better and better, and you keep staying ahead of the bookmakers at offshoreinsiders.com. Well, like I said, check out my newest obsession, the new SBR Odds. Dot com. Click on the beta. Click on the beta option. It's fantastic. And make sure you join Troy and me. We will be back here Monday at Sportsbook Review to take a look at the NBA. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos. So please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now, not to mention a visit to our industry-leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now, the links are over there to the left, uh, so do check those out. Thanks for watching.